and here we go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Samrak. I'm Geneva. My name's Zara. We are about to start another comedy special because that's what we do here. We yeah. love stand up comedy, <laughs> raunchy comedy, raunchy. slow comedy, build up comedy, whatever <laughs> you have. Yeah. <laughs> so today is somebody that we have not done on the channel mm -hmm. Neil Brennan. Mm. Do either of you know who Neil Brennan not is? Not a clue. No. Not so. He supposedly he was a good friend of Dave Chappelle. He wrote a lot of the okay. skits. Oh, he was well, he was one of the writers for the Chappelle show. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah. So when she, hmm. so he was never on stage, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so when Chappelle left and disappeared, that's when he basically went up and did stand up himself. Mm, okay. He came up with the special. I forgot how many years ago called Three Mics. He had three. He had like three different styles of uh, comedy. Okay. He had stand up. Uh, one-liners and something else I forgot but That's it's like fun. three mics uh, yeah but we're not doing three mics today mm -hmm. we're doing uh, I know he dropped the l latest on uh, Netflix this is 2024 but we're gonna go back two years prior mm -hmm. to watch the special blocks, blocks. I have blocks. not seen it you haven't seen it I have not seen it all yeah. But all that's, fresh that's where we're at yeah so it's all fresh reactions here is Neil Brennan I know who he is the two of you don't mm -hmm. so we ready yeah. let's do it yeah, so again, Neil Brennan from 2022, title Blocks of the Stand Up Special. If you do like our reaction, please like, comment, subscribe, so hit that notification bell. All right, let's do this. Let's see. And here we go. All right, let me see. You took a picture of him recently. Friend of mine, <laughs> former friend, we'll call her, <laughs> is an artist, right? And the theme of our friendship is kind of feeling alone in the world, right? So I wrote this show, which is about that feeling. And I sent her the script. And I was like, hey, you think you can make a backdrop for me? She's like, I got you. And then two days ago, she sends me this. <laughs> which feels less like alienation and more like a second grade speech therapist's oh. office. <laughs> And I'm like, how am I supposed to arrange these things? She's like, oh, you'll figure it out. <laughs> so I'm going to be talking to you guys well, he's arranging. all night. But I'm going to be preoccupied with trying to satisfy her. None of this should surprise me. It, is your life going smoothly? <laughs> Are you just floating from event to event feeling good about yourself? Because I'm not. <laughs> Most interactions I have feel like when you go to throw something away and it's in one of those garbage cans, it's got like a garbage hole, a recycling hole, and a compost hole, and you do your best, but afterward you're like, I don't think I did that right. <laughs> That's how I feel most of the time. <laughs> Going through life feeling like I fucked up and I'm gonna get in trouble. I worry that my final thought on Earth, on my deathbed, is gonna be, is that nurse mad at me? <laughs> These are technically the areas of my life that make me feel like something's wrong with me. Some of them are more important than others. We can start small. We'll start with dogs, right? So, I never had pets growing up, right? And I, so I, but I watch videos of dogs and they're so funny and loving. And soldiers come back from overseas and the dog's freaking out, the soldier's freaking out, the dog's fucking his face. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I should get a dog. <laughs> so I get a, a, a pit bull named Keith. And, um, and everybody told me Keith's gonna be your best friend. And I gotta say, maybe my ninth best friend. <laughs> Like, we're good, we're cool, but we just, whatever that thing is that opens up between humans and animals just never opened up. And then I go, do, do I not understand human-dog relationships, or am I the only person who understands human-dog relationships? Because everybody asks me the same question about Keith. They go, hey, is he a rescue? Yeah, they're all rescues. <laughs> None of these dogs are thriving on their own. <laughs> Never heard a story of like, hey, where'd you guys get your Labradoodle? Or like, when in the Bank of America, she was the manager. <laughs> <laughs> now she's our full-time Labradoodle. <laughs> I shouldn't even say, I rescued it. That's what we, people love patting themselves on the back. I, we rescued it, we saved it, we adopted it. No, you didn't. 
Here's what happened to your dog, my dog, every dog ever. The dog was born into a litter, kidnapped, given to you. <laughs> no, Neil, you don't understand. I'm a dog mom. Really? You know who else was a dog mom? That dog's mom. <laughs> But we think because we talk to the dogs like they're babies, that they're babies. They're not, they're our captives, right? <laughs> but we think because we go like, are you a pretty girl? You a pretty girl? Pitch your voice down, you'll see what a monster you are. Like, are you a pretty girl? <laughs> <laughs> we can go outside, but I can put a chain around your neck. <laughs> Do a trick for me, I'll give you a tiny morsel of food. <laughs> You're my best friend. <laughs> We try to make movies about it, romanticize their relationships, like Marley and Me. You know what a dog sees when he watches Marley and Me? He sees the movie Taken, but Liam Neeson never shows up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I think it's my fault. Like, something's wrong with me. Like, I, I, so I read books about loving dogs, just... <laughs> like, okay, so is this thing, is this for my LGBT joke, or is she trying to tell me I'm on the spectrum? <laughs> Even groups you'd think I'd feel like I'm a part of, I don't feel like I'm a part of. Like, uh, I like this. Yeah. liberals, <laughs> clearly liberal. <laughs> Look at me, bone thin. <laughs> <laughs> I look like Rachel Maddow with a beard. <laughs> but I don't feel like a part of the group because liberals are the least welcoming people on the planet, right? Republicans are having a blast. They're grabbing pussy, shooting guns like Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> Republicans get to be greedy. Republicans care about themselves, their families, rich people. That's it. Liberals got to care about everybody. Yeah. Not fetuses. But everybody in the world. <laughs> Fuck a fetus. Who's with me, liberals? Uh, damn. I will punt a fetus down Wilshire if I see one of those. <laughs> The problem with being liberal is there's no amount of liberal that's ever liberal enough. Like, if there's a bunch of Republicans standing around and someone comes up and goes, hey, I'm a Republican, they go like, come on in. If there's a bunch of liberals standing around, a liberal comes up and goes, hey, I'm liberal. They're like, we'll see. <laughs> you can believe the right shit is a liberal, but if you express it incorrectly, you're fucked. It's terrifying. You ever try to talk about, like, transgender issues in public? Even right now, you're like, we don't gotta do this, Neil. <laughs> Don't go out like your boy, just move on. Oh. <laughs> boy. But that's exactly my point, it's terrifying. Like, I'm sure we all believe the right shit, but you ever try, you try to talk about transgender issues in public is like playing conversational Jenga, where you're like, uh. Oh. He. They and the Republicans are like, so trannies? We'll call them trannies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened here? You guys playing Jenga? <laughs> I fucking love Jenga. Rack them up. There's a lot of little conundrums as a liberal, right? Like I live in Venice, California, in LA. Yeah. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of homeless people in Venice, but I'm from New York, so it's hard to take L.A. homeless people seriously. <laughs> it's like once you work with the best, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so one day I get home, and I got uh, an email, paper email, a letter, we'll call it. <laughs> And the letter says, we're gonna open a homeless shelter. And as a liberal, I'm like, that's great. And then I keep reading and it says, across the street from your house. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> it was like being on a game show, like, how liberal are you? Like, ah. <laughs> I wrote a black TV show. <laughs> yeah, like my neighbors, my neighbors wanna protest and shit. I'm like, I'm not gonna protest. I'm gonna move, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> No, I, I didn't move. And they opened the shelter. It's not bad. It's fine. <laughs> How liberal are you? would be a funny game show, by the way, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're at an airport, and a Muslim-looking man asks you to watch his luggage while he prays. <laughs> How liberal are you? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Pass. 